Hey everyone, welcome to Not Just Real Estate. We talk about real estate and everything else under the sun. I got Lindsay Foster here from Foster Living Team and myself, Rob Golfi with the Remax Golfi Team. And uh, yeah, we just uh, talk about things that happens every day to us and happens every day to you. So Lindsay, there's one thing I wanna talk about is Okay, this is, I'm going to throw this at you. We didn't even talk before, but have you ever gone into a house okay. and you're, you're, show, you're showing the house, or not even showing house, you're listing the house and you see uh, a door kicks in, like kicks into the door and punches into the door or the walls? You ever, you ever experienced that? Absolutely. I've seen spoons on the floor and belts hanging over the back of a door. I think we've seen it all. But no, tell but, me what you saw well, in particular. So, so. Okay, so I've been in, in all the years of selling real estate, I've probably been into about, I'd say three or four houses mm -hmm. where there's punched holes in the wall, punched holes in the door, kicked, kicked uh, holes with, you know, in doors, like, like the, you know, how you see the dent and what, like, how do you, like, I'm telling you, it's, it's. Were the people embarrassed? Are they like, well, oh, sorry? I, I, I think they are embarrassed. Yeah. I, th I think they are. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I don't think. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that it's mostly, you know, a, a gra an aggressive man that did that. But just in case there's some aggressive women there, I'm not going to leave you out. If you like to be part of that group, no problem. <laughs> Fashion holes in walls. Yeah, if you like that, not a problem. So, but, um, but how do you handle that? And how do you handle that when you're selling the house? Because cause the first thing that comes to mind mm -hmm. is... Oh, somebody's a, somebody's got a temper in this house. Absolutely. Like it's just uh, like, do you tell them to replace the door? Do you tell? I tell them if you know if you can patch the wall up, mm -hmm. that'd be great. You know, maybe you could put a house coat or a coat over the door that blocks the cover it the, up. The cover it up that the nobody sees. Special. It. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. But 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 the punched uh, punched holes with the in the to the drywall, mm -hmm. you definitely it's got to be repaired. It, it doesn't look good. It well, doesn't. Shopping for real estate, you're you're looking for a story, right? What's happened in this house? Is it warm? Yeah, is it or yeah. is it a place where people bash down doors? Yeah. And so I think if we were preparing a house like that for sale, yeah, we would definitely talk about what the options look like because yeah. oh, for sure. If for the sure. buyers get the heebie-jeebies because it doesn't have a warm, fuzzy feeling, I'll give yeah. you an example. There are a lot of houses for sale right now in a neighborhood in Hamilton called Homeside, and they're all between five and seven hundred thousand. Um, and I had one go up uh, late Thursday. We did it late on purpose because I wanted to yep, time, that's the, good timing, time, time for the weekend. That's awesome. Uh, go into Saturday, Sunday open houses, get lots of feedback. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had an offer within 24 hours on the market. Mm. We had four offers by 40 hours on the market. Wow. We sold it firm for 650000 So we split the difference on all the comps. And when we reflected, we looked at it in our Monday meeting today. We said, how did we do that? We made it feel warm. Yeah. We told a story. Yeah. It's clean. We patched the walls. We hung the art. We made the beds. And so yeah. I was walking into a house like that. I'd call my drywaller. Yeah. No, definitely. Because you don't want a family to walk in and say, there's been some heavy duty fights going on mm -hmm. in this house. Do we want to be, do we want that? Aura, or what do they call it? Karma. Yeah. Of that. Just going the essence. You can only sage yeah. so much out. And I think you guys probably talked about this on your podcast, but to take it a step further, that basketball player that spent $6 million in Oakville um, on a house where they were, oh, yeah. the Bitcoin or was it drug? Whatever it well, was, was illegal. Yeah. Well, people were going there looking for him. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that he sold it and moved out. No, he was renting. And he rented the house. Okay. And he moved away, but the seller, the owner that the the landlord, the owner that had it, sold it, and so is this basketball player. And and people are showing up looking for money look, with look, baseball look, bats. That's right. You know, yeah. whenever we show up with a buyer to a house that has like more than one security camera out front, we say the same thing. Like, who's coming back here? Yeah. Do you want to live in this house if they yeah. required eight security cameras out the yeah. front? Like, yeah. it's an interesting way to be. Yeah. And you know what? It just, um, it, like, you sense a lot of stuff when you walk into a house. I remember one time I'm sitting there and uh, I'm at, at the table and and his wife was sitting back a little bit and she said something and he almost like, like whatever, like he almost barked at her or looked at her and like, Holy smokes. Like, like she can't say anything. Mm -hmm. Like you, you could tell that was an abusive relationship. And it's just, um, it, it's sad. I, I feel sad for, um, you know, people that are in that. Uh, I, um, I know that, you know, there is 
uh, programs and there is help for them out there, but sometimes they're scared to go that route because they, they feel all alone and they, and they are not sure if they're going to be able to uh, survive it. They don't want to be alone. They have a man that's uh, taking care of them or a woman, whatever. And I get it. I get it. Cause I know, I know some people that have been abused and they're still in that relationship and they're afraid to get out of it. And, uh, they, so, so really they're uh, like, it's tough for them to get out. Well, it's an emotional day for us as well. We see all kinds of things. And, and when you're sitting at a table like that, we don't have an opportunity to do anything except sit with sellers. Right. Yeah. And yeah. We, we, it's our job to read a room. And sometimes you read some things yeah. in a room that don't leave you f- smiling. Well, I'll tell you one time, just, you know, going into, I, I, so I'm in this house. It was a four level back split on the Hamilton mountain and it was nighttime and it was a father and son. And it's, and it was almost like deliverance. I felt like I was in, like if anybody saw the movie deliverance, I mean, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're, you might be too young, but it's kind of a bunch of freaky people living in this house. So, and I'm on my way, like, so I'm looking at this house. Now I'm going down the stairs. Now me knowing that I'm in this house with some freaking weird shit people mm-hmm. and these guys could have knocked me out going down the stairs. We were just talking about this in our girl group. A it, lady showed a house. She got to the basement with the gentleman, and he turned to her and said, uh, this must be a little scary for you. And she went, well, not in, not until you said that. Yeah. And he said, this is a really um, like a vulnerable position you put yourself in. She said she just got upstairs and stood by the front window and said, I'll meet you there, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, like, but, but I was scared at that moment. Well, there's two men. It's you, well, it's you guys, and two guys. Yeah. But, but the thing is, I should have let them lead the way mm-hmm. because who knows? They could have hit me over the head, fall down the stairs. I could have been tied up in a, yep. in a, in a room that was blocked in and a steel door and, and uh, nobody would know where I was. And well, and we, I've personally pivoted my business. My six foot five, big bald husband meets most of the strangers and oh. it's a real blessing. Nobody's going to touch that guy. No, you can't fuck him up, no. but it, this was a constant concern. And now I don't need to meet strange men on no. a Friday at seven o'clock in Hagersville. Uh, unless right? you want to, unless of course I wanted to. <laughs> I don't have the money for that shit, Rob. But anyways, Unless, that's it. But yeah, no. But th- this is the scary shit that we've gone. Well, the pe- and the people are scary, but also like sometimes their shit is scary. Have you ever seen like oh, yeah. people? Like we get to look at people's the back bottom of your basement. Like you got weird oh, shit. God, we get yeah. to see all of oh, it. Oh, I know. We, we like the stuff that they have. Grow ups and gun safes, and uh, I've seen some really so, interesting. So, oh, the, the talk about grow ups. I'll tell you. This is, we're talking, this has got to be at least 20 years ago. Okay. When and it's illegal then. It's it, illegal it was, 20 it, years ago. It was ago. illegal. Sure. So I go into this house and, um, and the, um, it's a four level back split. So, and I was, you know, I'm kind of quick. I'm looking at the house. I go into the basement. I see this big black curtain and I just pull it aside. And oh my God, I just saw all this pot marijuana growing and then I'm like, oh, I pull it back. And he said uh, it was for his son. Well, his son passed away. Okay. And uh, he was, um, so, and I go, yeah, okay, no problem. I, I didn't say anything. And uh, he probably was thinking, oh, am I going to call the cops? Like, I didn't say a word. I just, you know, three months later, I get a phone call from him. Mm-hmm. Come list my house. And was all the stuff gone? It was gone and everything. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you something. So now I'm liable. Yep. To tell people, because you knew that was a marijuana grow, mm-hmm. so I have it listed, and uh, and I have somebody interested. The guy that was interested, in it, I knew him. He was uh, he's a small builder, contractor, and everything else like that. And I said to him, "Listen, this was a grow up. Like it was a good deal. It was a grow up. Are you sure you want to buy?" He goes, "Yeah, Rob, no problem." And so I made sure he signed something that he knew this was a grow up, and it wasn't mandatory back then to, to have because it wasn't sign. it wasn't that normal. It you wasn't didn't that, see it that yeah. often. So, but I wanted to, have, you know. So anyway, um, so he buys it, and then after that place was full of mold. I was going to say it's it's about the moisture. People always yeah. think it's the stigma of doing something illegal, and the truth is, your client wasn't even doing anything illegal. He probably had a medicinal grower's license. Well, he was, well his his son died though. He was dead, but he's still growing it. Okay, well, I wonder how that licensing yeah. works. But, but like, yeah, it's it's the moisture is the biggest issue, and yeah. and we've seen um, there's a 
building we were looking at and they had been doing a legal operation in the basement, um, hydroponic, like nice stuff. It had actually deteriorated the footings of the 120 year old structure just because the amount of water going through the air. Yeah. So, and you like know, one of the ways they used to spot it was they take the drones up because you can see the hot spots because it uses so much power. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when they were trying to find them, that's what they would, the police well, would well, do. Well, now, now it's hard because they use all uh, LED lighting, right? Mm -hmm. oh. So you don't know if they're drawing... Uh, are they still drawing a lot of power or not? I don't know. I don't know. Do people grow their own weed anymore? You can buy it at the strip mall yeah, for yeah, Christ's sake. Yeah, because I, I knew a, a friend of mine that I grew up with. He's a criminal now, <laughs> and uh, he, and uh, he's uh, he. Um, he, like uh, what kind of criminal? Well, it grows pot. I don't know if he, <laughs> so but, does my mom, Rob. Yeah, to be no, clear, no, no. But, this guy grew okay. a lot of pot. Okay, and uh, so he 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 was. Uh, it, it, it's hurt his business. There's really? No, yeah, yeah. When they made it legalized, it hurt his business. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Hey, did you have you drive when you come here? Do you ever take King Street or do you go across the mountain? No, no. Oh, well, sometimes I go across, but some, uh, I don't take King Street. I usually go Burlington up, okay. up uh, 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 Wentworth and then cross onto Cannon and up, up James Street. I ask because there is, they, they took them out of business, but they're back because the lights were on and my children can read now. Okay. So oh, yeah, when we're yeah. driving through the city, there's a shrooms shop. You can buy like, oh, they sell, is that legal? No, absolutely not. I, I know that they were shut down a few months ago. They took everything that was in there. It's back up and running full force and you can go buy magic mushrooms on King street right no now. Kidding. And my children know too, because they can fucking read. Everybody, so they, uh, apparently a lot of people buy them online, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's going to become legal. I mean, every like in not maybe in my lifetime, but I do think all drugs are going to be legal. Like, but they're just going to be proportionate because they basically put the guys that sell marijuana on the streets out of business. Mm -hmm. Like they literally got rid of those guys. Well, and that's a very European model. You can do a lot of crazy things in yeah. Europe and they just trust people will do it in small doses. Yeah. And if you're going to do it in big doses, you were going to anyways, that's I think it. is the mentality, but uh, okay. So I that's a grow you, up. I gotta, uh, yeah. I got to tell you a story. Um, okay. so I, I buy this uh, building in St. Catharines, okay. right? So we're going to put our St. Our Catharines office there, plus I'm going to put it into a co-workspace. Okay. And uh, so anyway, and, and um, so I buy it. They have to clean all their shit out, all that, their desks, everything, clean it out. And they asked about the safe. And I said, oh, no, it's okay. Leave the safe. The safe. safe's about maybe five foot tall. And okay. it's about, I don't know, maybe three feet wide. It's pretty big. Okay. It's, you know, it's it's... Was it a bank? Why was there a safe? It was uh, the CAA uh, uh, operated out of there. So they would put passports and stuff in there. Okay. And so now I'm getting the place renovated. It's been gutted and it's getting renovated now. And um, um, my contractor said, we got to get the safe out of here. Because now, like, I mean, we can't even move it. Like, thank God the walls I was putting up wasn't in the middle of a wall. Sure. So we, we're, we're, I said, okay, let's get this thing up. Let's get rid of it. Let's, let's see if we can get, sell it. Best offer no action and i'm like oh my god anyway so and then i um and then so we tried to call people to get rid of it we got quotes of four grand like, oh, i'm not gonna pay four grand to get rid of a safe that's it so anyway i found somebody um to get rid of it for a thousand bucks right nobody even wanted this for free nobody even wanted it for free i uh, that's uh, let's see see what happens okay so i was gonna uh, so anyway but we couldn't even move this thing ourselves I'm going to tell you, like, it was heavy. Like, like, like. It's not like, a little gun safe. This is like a heavy This, this piece is of a freaking, like, it's like the planet could blow up. This thing would still be there. Okay. So, and uh, so none of, none of my staging guys, we can't move this. Our, we have no equipment that can, you can, you know, tilt it. And like, there's nothing we had. So anyway, we finally found somebody, negotiated a thousand dollars. We get, and then, so, okay, the guy, they, they come. And they go, this thing is heavy. <laughs> so they go, no, we can't do this. Uh, we have because we got to get special equipment to get rid of it. Okay. And I go, how much? And they go, twenty five hundred bucks. And I just go, I go to my assistant, just do it, do it. Get let's get rid of this thing. This thing's bothering me now. It cost me twenty five. So twenty five hundred bucks. So they go to Toronto to pick up this equipment so that they can wheel it out of there somehow. I'm not sure what equipment they're getting. And then um, so they get it and they get it outside. And then they put it on the truck. Guess what? It's too heavy for the truck. Was it to blow the shocks on it the did. truck? It did. It just Holy poof. shit. Like the thing was just sitting on the tires. So they go, oh my God. So anyway, they, uh, they say, okay, we got to come back tomorrow. 
and uh, and get a different truck to load this on. This thing, this was like a day and a half job. Like they had to go to Toronto to get the equipment to get this thing the first day. They won't, you know what I mean? It's just, and anyway, so they finally, they finally uh, get it on the truck and they get rid of it. And then we, we e-transferred them uh, 2,500 bucks. bucks. Like, I'm going to tell you something. You couldn't have turned it into furniture at that rate. Like there was nowhere for this I thing to never, sit. You know what? Next time, if you have anything heavy like that, mm -hmm. make sure they take it out. Just say, take it get out. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. That must be gone. Is part of the deal, and I was being kind of that guy. Oh, maybe we can use a safe, right? Everybody always, yeah. Has to like, have why a can't safe. we? Just... No, never again, never again. A twenty five hundred dollar mistake. I should have had that. Should have had that removed from the premises, just like all the other stuff they, they needed to remove. So, but yeah, don't. But don't... I would have personally, I would have thought it would have value. Like, there's weight to metal. No so kidding. I'm surprised that you didn't you make know, a couple. Thousand. But you know what? But it, it it's so damn heavy. This is a, a safe that you do not move. This is like once you sit it down, mm -hmm. you leave it there. I can't believe the CAA needed that kind of equipment. Well, well, you know what? The old days, the CAA building was there probably for like probably cash 40 tender years. Too. They probably, probably put all their, their cash drawers in it. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. But it's just, um, uh, yeah, they, they, they need it for, for, uh, what do you call it? Uh, passports. They wanted to make sure that nobody's passports, I guess they did passports there. Yeah. So when, when they did it and then it would come there, they go there and pick it up after. And they'd have to be locked and loaded. Yeah, but, but yeah, but I, I'll tell you, you know, and then another thing happens to me at this location is that, um, so I was there on Saturday morning meeting the contractor, meeting the, the cabinet guy and meeting the electrician and everything. And um, so I'm in there. The back the back side door is padlocked from the inside. So I, I couldn't get in from outside and I couldn't even get out from the outside, from okay. the inside. So that's long. There's no way I can go through that door regardless. So I go in through the front door and then, uh, and then I, I, I needed to go to my car to get something. I couldn't get out. You know that those glass doors, they have a bar you just push. Sure. Well, that thing wasn't working. I was stuck in there. You were just locked in your own I building. was locked in. Locked in. I couldn't Jesus get out. Jesus Christ. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was like, I'm t it was like a moment. Like, are you kidding me? Like, what the hell is going on here? And because, and then, so I had a guy, the first guy that showed up was the, the cabinet guy. So I had to get my key and kind of, kind of try to slip it through the door so he can unlock the door. Because oh, you open. had the key. I had Jesus the key. Jesus Christ. So I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, uh, so we made sure that, the door wouldn't lock again. Mm -hmm. So everybody's coming in. I said, don't lock that door. Otherwise, we're not getting out of here. We have to call somebody to... to a locksmith uh, to get us well, out. It wouldn't have been a locksmith because we, we we had the key, but we just had to slip it through the door and we just had to find somebody that would be willing. Like, who do you call you're, 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 uh, to, to open a door? Like, do you, do you call somebody in the, like that you live one, with? One of your kids, 20, yeah. But they're 20 minutes away. Jesus. So it's not like... You can go to the, well, I guess you could go to the, to the, to the, there was a gas station. Uh, so did you door. make another key and put it in a lockbox and hang it outside N your property? No, it's, no, no, get, we got the keys <laughs> to get in. We just need uh, that, that. The emergency uh, exit. To, to exit. We need to get exit. But you know what I mean? Like, like, think about it. Like, see the, the stuff that we're up. Have like, you owned that building long? Um, I bought it. I think it was September last year. I closed on it. Okay. Yeah. So we're. I think. I think it's going to be finished in six weeks. Oh, that's month, exciting. Six weeks. Yeah. We're gonna. Yeah. I've got all glass. It's gonna be like. You ever watch Suits on Netflix or Suits? I just stain it, but I've okay, seen it. Okay, you got yes. it. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna be. It's gonna be kind of like that. Oh, I uh, love corporate that corporate look. It's. Yeah, we're gonna have our St. Catherine's office out of there, and there'll be other other businesses there. We already got a uh, a guy that uh, he runs a plumbing company. He's he's gonna have a, an office in there. And, okay, yeah. that's where the co working piece comes in. The co working area, mm -hmm. and then people can just go in there and work. Yeah, and then have coffee. We're gonna we got a super coffee machine. You know how uh, Conrad has those coffee machines. Yeah, I think we have Juras, don't that's we? That's what we're gonna have. We're yeah. putting Jura. They're like ten grand. Yeah, they're right? stupid. Freaking but like they do everything. Oh, but they I'm, put sprinkles on top. Oh yeah, like I'm not gonna put i'm, I'm gonna have the 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 is a cappuccino okay. i'm not gonna have that because it's, it's a lot of work to clean those are for special occasions yeah that's gonna be locked up the one in burlington our burlington office we used it one time and then i put it up in the drawer and then all the guys oh we'll take it down we're gonna use it every day so they they actually i said guys if you guys don't take care of this machine you're gonna be back to a keurig and you're gonna be mm -hmm. you know drinking tim horton's coffee i said so you better 
No one needs that much milk anyways. Like yeah. a cappuccino a week cappuccino. is good for me. My like, God, that like, you know how many calories are in yeah. that freaking cappuccino? Yeah, that's These not guys my are choice. Cappuc- I don't think, I think they're, I think they think this is Seinfeld. You know where they're eating the yogurt and they think right? it's fat-free yogurt and it's not? It's and they not? get it tested? We're going over this right now because we need to get a coffee maker for our office, which is about half finished. No, better than half finished at this point. But we didn't buy our building. We rented it. Yeah. So our renovation is a very different scale because yeah. anything I'm paying money for might have to leave with me in the middle of the night in the worst case scenario, <laughs> right? So um, so coffee maker is something we can actually spend money on because well, we'll yeah, own it. You could take that. So like the um, like I bought the jury. It was about it was about forty five hundred to five grand. We got a nice coffee machine at in Burlington office. Mm-hmm. So that one there is, is it idiot proof? Uh, it, 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 it is it is that's pretty, important pretty, to me. Yeah it is. Um because if I can figure it out but I have other people always just go get it. your yeah. coffee. Of course That's you it. do. But no, no, it's it's idiot proof. It's just like the ones you see at uh, at the Remax offices. Uh, oh, okay. But but it it um, but they're it's great coffee. I'm well, we were going to do the Nespresso, but the, by the time you buy it, if you have five people, it, you you could have just ordered coffee in yeah, at that yeah. rate. It's not the cheap. the Nespresso's not cheap. The Nespresso pods aren't cheap, and we've gone through two machines in three years because we're pretty heavy drinkers at home. Yeah. Um, and so I don't think that they're the most sustainable, right? No. And they're certainly not giving you a lifetime warranty on a yeah, $120 no, no, Nespresso yeah, machine. Yeah. So, so these, these Jura's things are pretty good. The, the coffee's great. We're, we're the, the other one. Now the one in Burlington, we figured it could handle, you know, 10 to 30 cups a day, which is not a problem. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But the other ones, we need it to handle a hundred cups a day. You've got plumbers there for goodness sakes. You we need do. We co- have to have a coffee special, coming in hot. Yeah. Oh, a, a direct line. Direct line, I like water that. line to it. Are you putting a new kitchen in that building? Yeah, all, everything's brand new. Flooring, oh, you see the glass. Just the glass alone mm-hmm. in this building is over a hundred grand. Jesus, that's a lot of glass. It's just, just make sure you're not wearing short skirts. <laughs> facing, facing, no, I need to come drive glass. by. I want to see it. That's so exciting. <laughs> that's it. But yeah, no, it, it um, it's it's going to be like very corporate. The outside's already done. We mm-hmm. had beautiful. Like I redid the whole whole outside. If you Googled the address. Um, uh, you would see the old, how the CA is, but now you drive, drive by, looks good. Now we're just going to put our signs up. I'm going to put the co-workspace. Our, our co-workspace sign is, uh, our name is Bright Workspace. Okay. So Bright, uh, we got the website ready to go. We just have to click on to go, but it's called brightworkspace.com. And, um, so that'll be ready to go. And also speaking of that, um, I, did, I told you we were opening up a, a property management company. You did, yeah. And, but did I tell you that I was able to buy a property management company for one dollar? How? I'm telling you, dealing. This is Rob Golfie. My they, God! I bought it for yeah. So they had a uh, hundred doors. Okay. Meaning, you know, so hundred clients, and um, and I negotiated him to buy it, but I gave uh, I gave him a salary for two years. Okay. And um, yeah, and we we just. Ordered the, the the small van that he's going to drive. I got the insurance company giving me the liability. We're ready to transfer over all his clients over to That's our. That's a great kickstart, oh, right? Big time. You know what? It, it it'll like that hundred will help us pay for him. Now we're just going to build on it. So. Did you find him or did he find you? Uh, I, I, I seeked him out. So I, I put the word out there, mm-hmm. um, saying that hey, if you know anybody that's looking at selling a property management company. Uh, let me know. So this one guy, great guy, um, he is uh, wants to be a paralegal. He's got another year left. Um, so he's going to be the guy that's going to be kind of our guy that manages and everything sure. in the field. And um, and then we're going to learn from him. Plus, we're we're I've got a guy from California. He's got over a thousand doors. So he's going to show us how to build up to a thousand doors. And um, and, and learn the business really well. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not an easy business when you get some bad tenants. Um, and but, the legality. I mean, and it's changing all the time, uh, right? Yeah, so yeah. staying on top of that is very important. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm looking looking forward to it. So we're starting two different companies within uh, 60 to 90 days of each other. So uh, it's not like I have enough headaches uh, right? alone. But but you know what? I love being busy. I love what I do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love, uh, I, I just love, I love starting up a, a, a new venture. Mm-hmm. And I like, like I'm, and I I don't lay off on the other stuff. Like I'm, I go hard on everything. Good for so, you. Yeah, but, you have a lot of hours in your day. I feel like you know what it is. You know what it is. I get a lot done between I'd say five thirty and nine thirty in the morning. So if you look at it, that's and I, ten thirty four hours. Nine, no, is that four hours? Four hours, four hours of uninterrupted time. Mm-hmm. For even if it's three hours uninterrupted, my three hours 
makes like is probably somebody's full day they probably can't get that done i get and the only the only hard part about when you're up early in the morning like that is that if you have to make a phone call you have to wait till eight o'clock yeah i, like, I do call people eight o'clock in the morning i figure they got to be up at eight if yeah if you're not business. answering your phone at eight you're not a business yeah, person yeah. i get that well and i know a lot of girls that or realtors in general that try to put some time management around that. Like they yeah. don't answer their calls after eight o'clock. And all I think is like, you must have enough money Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> to not be answering your calls no shit, or to limit eh? that. Right. No shit. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's different types of salespeople. Yeah. So. I, I just, you know what it is. So, but that helps me, uh, keep going and, 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 uh, and just get things done. And, um, and it, what I like doing is offering people partnerships, okay, like small partnerships where that, their partnership is not going to affect anything to do with financing or anything to do with like me getting, you know, like a lease on a, on, on that company. The, Cause once, if you go, the, the bigger the partnership you go now, you got to hope they both have, they have a, a good credit rating and everything else. Mm-hmm. But, it's, but, but if it's just a small percentage, like 10, 20%, mm-hmm. boom. And then what happens is um, these people will, will not leave you and, yeah. and they stay with you. And so, yeah, you're like, building good relationships. Well, yeah, and 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 they're just they want this thing to succeed as much as you do. So partnerships, I think, are good. Uh, it just depends. How, uh, like, there's a lot involved in. in are uh, you a Kevin O'Leary fan? I like him, but I hate him. Okay, I'm one. I'm, I'm. I like the guy. You're you're giving me Kevin O'Leary energy today. Yeah, I'm getting hard. Yeah. Do O'Leary. you like him? Do you like him or yeah, not? Yeah, like would I like to have dinner with him? Absolutely. Yeah. Do I appreciate his business ethics? As long as they're not attacking me, I, would I go on a boat with him? Absolutely, the fuck not. Yeah, but no, anyway, yeah, no. But you know what? I, but I think Kevin O'Leary likes that image of being tough. Mm-hmm. But but I hear a lot of good things about him because I know a guy that lives next door to Kevin O'Leary at, 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 with his cottage up north. Okay, and he and says he's a great guy. He's like, no, he's got nothing bad. Like Kevin's a like a, like he's probably I don't know worth three four hundred million dollars. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't get that way for no reason. I mean, you he, like the guy's smart. He he graduated at. Uh, Western at Ivy, and I don't know if you know Ivy is like the equivalent of Harvard, high uh, level chef. Yeah, mm-hmm. like so, like like the high, like to, to even get accepted to Ivy, like you almost have to have like a hundred percent graduating out of school uh, to get it. And then and then and th- there's a lot of people that are like that, but then they have to pick you. So he is one of the guys that uh, uh, made it for Ivy. He's a graduate of of there now, like. Like he's tough, but I think he's he's smart. Like, like I'll tell. Here's a perfect example. Okay, now forget that you're that we're real estate agents, right? Okay. Forget it. So you're looking to hire a realtor to sell your house, right? Now, do you want the nicest guy? What is it? You want the nicest guy, um, or do you want the guy that's going to get you top top right? So he's a real jerk. Mm-hmm. You don't like him, but you know he's the right guy. This is it. Because he, this guy is, he does. He's cut and dry. He's a straight, straight He's a straight shooter. Straight shooter. He's going to get you top dollar, but you're not really a big fan of his marketing or anything. Mm-hmm. Now, you got this other guy, he's super nice, but he doesn't have the, let's say, the balls. Yeah, the performance skill. The performance, mm-hmm. the negotiating, mm-hmm. and this and that. Can he stand up to the asshole that you don't like. Absolutely. What would you go with? The asshole or the nice guy that may end up crumble in the negotiations or maybe not be able to come up with stuff? Yeah. No, you're totally right. It was the same. It's like the realtor that can't tell you that your house smells. Like yeah. if you if you hire a real estate agent that doesn't have the gonads to tell you that you have a stinky house, then you're not going to no, wind up No, you don't want that your, guy. No, absolutely. You don't want that. I, I've had to tell people, I go, listen, I know you have a dog. A lot of people don't have dogs out there. Mm-hmm. And, and they're and sensitive. They're, and I just say, listen, I think we should put something in here, like uh, something you pl- plug in, it, it airs the place with a different smell. Mm-hmm. And they go, yeah, it smells. I say, yeah, you know what? People that have dogs won't smell it, but people that don't, they will smell they it. They will. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the way I do it. It's kind of soft and subtle. Yeah. And then sometimes I'll bring air, like the air air things that you plug in. Yeah. Oh, we'll put, we'll put them in there, especially if it's uh, an empty house. Boom, we'll come in, we we'll plug them in. Boom, boom, we got the vanilla smell going. Get and a fan on and call it a it. day. Yeah, yeah. You don't want, like, yeah, hey, we, that's why they hired us. 
Absolutely. You know, I, and, and if they can't handle that object, you know, what mm -hmm. are you going to do? And then I won't have anyone to negotiate with if we don't get offers. Right. That's right. So that's, that's part right. of the front end. So you better, yeah, it's better to go to the front. But you know what? You, you could say it nicely. I would never go to someplace. This place smells like, like, like crap. And then, yeah, they're going to take offense to it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I had one lady, she was a high school principal and like I go in their house she lets her dogs shit in the basement. Oh my floor. god! Oh like, my god! Like, like the, it. This house smelled bad. She must have had an immune system of a and fucking going, ox. And she yeah. wants top dollar. I said, "Listen, you can't have everything." Mm -hmm. I, I and I said to her, "Look, you have to get these dogs to go outside." I go, I, I like I said, you can smell that they they go downstairs. Mm -hmm. like, well, you can. It was all over the house. So. Um, anyway, she, um, I think she did her best, but it didn't get rid of the smell. And did people point it out? Oh yeah. But people know that, you know, you go in there and wash and this and that. Yeah. You, you, but still it's, it's going to cost you money. I had a lady yeah. that smoked over the yeah. stove. She told me, don't worry about it. I turned the exhaust on. I said, I'm not worried about anything. I sell houses. It's, it's going to yeah. sell. Yeah. But if you're worried about your bottom line, you're going to take that out to the back porch and quit doing it over top of your stove. Cause nicotine people are oh yeah you think people are sensitive about dogs if you walk into yeah. a smoky house people oh, are yeah and here's an interesting story for you so this was actually a huge hole in my real estate abilities so this before i had daniel so six years ago oh you got a son named daniel i have a son named daniel i got a son named daniel i know it's a good name they're handsome boys too yeah oh, um, there you go. daniels are good looking yeah um so before i i had daniel i on the same day had the first and only migraine of my life oh wow and a miscarriage, oh, just sir. a bundle of cells. Thank you for okay, saying it was sorry. not a thing. And I came out of the hospital and I didn't smell anything for almost three years. Are you kidding? I went to the neurologist. I had something called like as a phantom gasma. So one time Scott burnt butter for almost eight weeks. All I could smell or taste was the burnt butter from that day. My entire neural pathway was messed up. So part of my listing pitch would be, I don't know what happened to my body that day, but I can't smell. So if your house smells, you have to independently tell me <laughs> so that we can get in front of this. So, and people would be so generous. They'd be like, oh, you poor girl. And I'd be like, it's not, it's not a poor girl thing. It's a poor you thing because yeah, I can't help you yeah, in this arena because yeah, yeah. I couldn't smell. No kidding. Mm -hmm. What the heck is that about? So bizarre. And then one day I just, I could smell again. And it was very emotional. Like I had, a, people like to sniff newborn babies. I had newborn babies. You couldn't smell your baby. Couldn't smell them. Couldn't yeah, smell anything. Yeah, they have that nice. Well, or they'd smell. We went to New York in September, and it was unseasonably warm. And New York garbage has a notable smell that probably stuck with me for three months. And whatever I ate, or so you could eat in f at a garbage blue cheese. dump. I could have blue cheese, and it would just taste like New York street garbage or Scott's burnt butter. So, so okay, okay. So you couldn't smell French fry truck down the street. No. Oh my God, no, nothing. You couldn't. So, but what about your taste buds? It affected your taste buds Completely. Too? And I don't even think it was the taste buds. I think it was the receptors. Like my brain wasn't registering. It's so much so that we'd call them the bad smells. And I'd wake up and I'd be like, Scott, I'm having a bad smell day. And my mom would come over and I'd be bleaching my kitchen because I'm trying to find the smell. And she'd be like, what are you doing? There is no smell. It's somewhere between the bottom of your chin and the top of your wow. head. And everything was jacked up. And I'll tell you, I, I don't know. There are lots of things that have happened in my life. I've lost some weight. Had my wisdom teeth removed. And I think that that also helped rejig some stuff because for about two years, I've been able to smell again. But a so huge how long hole. you been smelling now? Two years, but for three years, if I smelled anything, it was shit. Wow. Yeah, weirdest thing. And I, and honestly, like back to work. So a so, huge hole in your program because like you want to know if someone's so, house is gross. So, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait yeah. a minute. You're, okay, you're going to bed. Your yeah. husband's with you in bed. Are you smelling dirt? Dirt. And Smog. you're like, and you don't want your husband near you. No. Oh my Get God. Get away no. from me. You smell like shit. And it would, and it would, so like men's deodorant is particularly musky, <laughs> let's say this, <laughs> this disorder would like pick up the worst part of the smell. <laughs> So I wouldn't get like the aloe or the mint. I would just get like rot, like full blown rot at all times. So he could take a crap in the bathroom. You and I wouldn't answer. smell it. That used to be the funny thing yeah. though. Like I could be in the washroom with the rest of my family. So, so what was the first thing when you actually start smelling? Baking. Like, my mother is an impeccable. I, I walked in. You said in. I could smell. She had brownies in the oven and chicken noodle soup on the stove. And I walked in and I went, 
oh my God, mom, I can smell that you're cooking. It was like, a, we, we had a cry. It was Did a breakdown a moment. Absolutely. Oh my God. Uh, like, does this happen often? Um, I don't know. You'd have to go to the internet to find out. I, I'm not familiar with any friends who have had this problem and we don't even know what made it happen. Like, like you could have lost your memory. Absolutely. I can lost my imagine? memory of smell. You mm -hmm. lost your memory of smell, but can you imagine like a, like it hit a different nerve in your brain? Mm. Like you, it could have been anything. You 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 probably wouldn't not know who you are. Your husband, you could say, "Hey, your husband would have said, <laughs> you would have said, you looked at him, say, hey, who, who are, are you?'" you? <laughs> and and like no head trauma. Like, like it's not like I had a concussion. Yeah. I didn't fall. I wasn't blacked out. No. I just so was that your first baby? Second. I had, Second, so, so I had so Louisa was born. You have three, right? No, two, two, so, two, and a and and one that wasn't meant to be. Right, but um, wow. yeah, and I will never know why. But I couldn't smell people's houses, and it used to be oh crappy because, like, you know, cooking smells and smoking smells and mold, mold. Yeah. Everybody says, "Oh, you don't need a moisture reader. The best way to find mold is with your nose." And I'd be like, "Not if you're me. <laughs> I can't, oh I can't do it at all." You know what? Like I, that's crazy, mm -hmm. insane. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes! I'm glad to have my sense of smell so back. So people most making of the fun, time. fun of you, uh, um, like, like saying, "Oh, this is a great steak dinner." Oh, my. Scott would always do that, or he'd cook. Like I don't, I. Prefer not to cook bacon in the house. Like we have a hot plate for some of the cooking, and I make it go outside because, yeah. like, I'm still sensitive to yeah, how stinky yeah. it gets. But I don't know. So, so we have, I have, we have, a, I have a friend, and he's deaf in one ear, right? Okay. And so I, I go. To, this just happened this past weekend. I go to his wife. You ever make? You ever like just pretend you're saying it out loud and he can't hear? She goes, "Yeah, you want to see? You want to see?" And she just lips the words. She lips the words. He goes. What? <laughs> oh my God. Because he could hear only in one ear. And was we, he born like that? Or he was did born he have, that way. Really? He was born. They didn't realize he was deaf in one ear. And because every time he'd pick up the phone, he would put it in one ear. Mm -hmm. like, and I think so. So if he's driving in the car and the passenger seat's this way, yeah. So it's the, so his right ear is deaf. Because I, I, I remember he goes, he loves it when he's driving, his wife's yelling at him. She could be yelling. He won't He hear can't a hear a fucking thing. <laughs> goes, oh, I like, love that. But, so he can hear out of only his lap. So he would always like put his uh the 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 telephone on his left ear he, and uh so they didn't realize till he, he was deaf till probably like when he was like four or five years old really like, so he was deaf in one ear from birth and uh, yes but like it's it's funny like if you had to lose a sense yes which one would you lose smell because you've already, you've already done, done it done it <laughs> so yeah so smell would be good no but but you but the food would not be the same. No. Uh, um, would, okay, there's hearing, there's, there's your eye, sight, hearing, sight, smell. Just, smell and taste is the same. Is the same. Okay. Is that, is that right? I think How so. How many senses we have? Is it four or I five? I think it's five, isn't it? Because then there's touch. Touch? No. Your uh, eyes, your nose, eyes, your ears, your, uh, your mouth, and your hands. Yeah. So what which would one? I lose? If you, so you did it once already. So you could. So it was a it was a breeze for you. Yeah, but also I have a five and seven year old. So losing my hearing for a day or two sounds peaceful. Yeah, to be honest. Yeah, you wouldn't have to listen to that shit. What would but, you lose? I don't know. I love food. I love smelling, smelling things. I love. Um, I, I I can't lose my sight. My hearing would be. I think I think it would have to be uh, maybe smell. Mm -hmm. it, it's tough, but I, I love the taste of food, though. That's what the, right. Like, I, it's like I just I just hope I don't have to ever go through that. Like 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 you thought you lost it forever. I thought I was gonna smell New York garbage until the day I died. Yeah, wow. it was such a gift. But I couldn't, as someone who has to wear glasses, like without these, I basically am blind. And that's one thing I don't think I could live without. Imagine the amount of assistance as, as hard A type people that do everything for themselves. Could you imagine? Would you ever get uh, a laser done? I don't know. The idea of shooting lasers into my eyes. I, I, that's scary. Maybe GBs. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's great. I know people that have done it. And I think um, uh, people, some people regret because they they see dots at night like when they're like when they're driving really? like it's it's 
like, but I've also worn glasses for 20 years and they're a fashion statement. So yeah, when, nice in fact, wear glasses. when we, when we, when I found out we were doing this, I ordered myself five pairs from a cheapy website cause I didn't want to wear the same pair every week. Yeah. So I like them as an yeah, accessory no, no, as well. I, I think it is a great accessory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Unless I, you don't have a pair on you and you need to read something. Yeah. And then you're yeah screwed, no kidding. But. Yeah. No, like I, I, I wear my, uh, my glasses here. I got one in each pocket here. <laughs> Do you yeah. really? Well, cause I, I forgot mine, but I got these. <laughs> these are nice. These are nice blue ones. I, I love them. Well, you left your last pair at the airport didn't you no it was your headphones maybe then my, my passport i left at the airport <laughs> Jesus Christ. yeah so i left my passport but these ones here but if i lose these i'll never buy a, an expensive pair of uh reading glasses again i'm mm -hmm. done that's it because i've lost uh two expensive glasses this is the third one if i lose this uh i'm gonna go online i'm gonna get my prescription go online and buy something like for 50 60 bucks and, no i got yeah. the, i got four pairs for 120 now the frames the, are not a sustainable choice the yeah. stuff i have from the optometrists lasts four times yeah, longer but, but, I just, but, but i'm just you know what like but but I, when you need them just for reading mm -hmm. you have a tendency of putting different places and yeah and and it's not it's not the same it's not like you like a, it's, like I get the, my cheapies that I buy at Costco the three last pack? forever. Yes. And then the ones that I pay a lot of money, I lose them. Well, that's because so. you're throwing them down as yeah. you go and you can't find so, them anywhere. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, yeah. So what else is going on in your life? Oh, I went thrifting this morning. So I have to decorate the office. And oh, as yeah. always, like you can't, first of all. When do you think you'll be in there? Oh my God, Thursday. Oh, I got no the shit. desks. I got the chairs. The kitchen counter just went in. I got a message when we sat down. You're going to put a little sign that says uh, realtor on duty when you're there? Yes. I ordered um, a open hours sign, like a vinyl to go on the door. And it says hours all day, every day, which I think is very is cute. That what it says? Yeah, it really truly does. All day, uh, all every day, day, every day. Um, I love that. Can I steal that? Yeah, absolutely. Please. Okay. Um, <laughs> put, don't put the Foster Living logo on it. People will be no, confused. No, no, no. But um, we, uh, yes, yeah, so I went thrifting this morning because, like, I have a kitchenette to fill in and I, and I don't want to yeah. go to Walmart or home sense. Cause I like you want, weird shit. Yeah. Yeah. And also because we're on Ottawa street, this is, this I is like, like an Ottawa. antique Mecca. Yeah, right? I love it. I love it. So I can't just stick a struck tube couch in the front no, window. I'll no. be judged harshly. So I had some minor successes. I also don't know if you know this, but I'm a plant mom. So part of moving offices is that I need to reproduce plant babies at my house so that I can have a window display. Why don't you put a piano in front of the store outside all summer? Because it'll get stolen, Rob. No, it's well, Hamilton. No, they won't steal that piano. You don't think? Just bolt it to the ground. You need bolt to come. It. You need to come see where I'm at. Um, I, we're um, and we're excited. We have a grand opening date. So they close Ottawa Street in May. Um, for yeah, one for the, day, for, isn't that for the, uh, it's called food so hungry. Yes. Food, food trucks. trucks. So that's yeah. going to be our grand opening. Yeah. So we'll be there. The, hopefully the whole city will come out. We can all have poutine and, and see this new space. I so. think it's awesome. Yeah, well, I know. Good stuff. It shows us we needed some projects, right? We got our fingers. You in know all what? The pies it's right good. Now. It's good. You know what? But, but you start establishing that you're the, uh, person for that neighborhood, sure. but, but I think it was a good call going on Ottawa. I, I do. I, I, I drive that street every single day of my life. Yeah. I, I think do. it's lovely and yeah. it's so close to home. We timed it. We, um, there's two ways to get there. Yeah. So we left the house at the same time and agreed to drive the speed limit. And, um, one way is six minutes and one way is four and a half. So like, oh my God, you so, could spit on it. So which, do you have a favorite? Uh, like my favorite is still the six minute way. Cause it's that you get to look at weirder shit. Um, but I always thought like, maybe I should take up running and I could just like run to the, there's, there's I've got some options. Well, I could buy a bicycle, that means, that Rob. Means, that, so you're probably two to three kilometers away from there. Yeah. If yeah, like just if you, two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like. Could I run that? Yeah, like because usually it takes a, a real runner to run a, a kilometer in five, uh, four and a half, five minutes, but uh, an, an amateur can do it probably in no, yeah. Wait a minute, I could walk one kilometer in nine and a half minutes. Oh my god! So you, I could be like a thirty-minute walk from my office at like a decent pace. Nine and a half minutes. So let's say you could do a ten-minute walk. Yeah. If it's two kilometers, uh, two minutes, tw twenty minutes. Twenty to, minutes. Yeah. Can an uh, can an amateur runner run for two kilometers? Is that reasonable? I think so. Well, if maybe they do we'll a find nice out. light jog, and they probably can do it in fifteen minutes. I'm turning thirty-five at the end of the month, so I could I could add something new to my repertoire. There you go. Running from my problems. There you go. We're out of time. Thank you. Anyway, everybody, thanks for listening uh, to Not Just Real Estate. Listen, don't forget to like, follow, and share. Go back and take a look at some of our past uh, episodes. Look, looking forward to seeing you guys uh, listen to, uh, listening to us again. Thanks.